My name is Mary Conlon and I am the founder and artistic director of Ormston House and for the IKT Hybrid Conference I am introducing our project the Museum of Mythological Water Beasts which is a project about, along and in the River Shannon. Ormston House is a grassroots institution in the heart of Limerick City in Ireland and we describe it as a meeting place for the arts and we're interested in placemaking and community building. We work with local and international artists and many of our projects, in particular our multi-year projects, are inspired by or draw on local history, political debates and environmental campaigns. As a result, the artistic programme often includes social activism, community meetings, our festival hub and a range of ways for people to participate and inform activities. Another good example of this is our free membership scheme for artists. In 2016, Limerick Culture and Arts Office held extensive public consultations across the city and county and the topic most discussed by citizens was the River Shannon. And we discovered there was not only a tremendous interest in the river, but also tremendous local knowledge about the river from lots of different perspectives. From this, Ormston House developed the Museum of Mythological Water Beasts so that we could learn about the river with artists and communities. Around this time, we were beginning to develop distinct curatorial strategies and models for our programme. For the Museum of Mythological Water Beasts, we began with an open research process and a series of events supported by Waterways Ireland, connecting with and led by boat makers, historians, swimmers, folklorists, environmental scientists and fishermen. We worked with an archaeologist, Limerick's harbour master and other catchment custodians. Both the artists and the public would learn about the river together. Often members of the public, visitors or attendees would be contributors through sharing their stories and experiences. Following this initial research programme, the Arts Council of Ireland offered Ormston House an award to commission artists to make new work, which I co-curated with my colleague Neve Brown. We curated a series of what we called exhibition environments, where artworks and presentations in the gallery space would grow and contract over the course of the exhibition. So our museum is an active working space in flux where artists and members of the public can respond to or feed into the process or even just simply follow the decisions made by the artists and the curators. Up to this point, our focus was specifically on the Limerick region. However, the River Shannon is the longest river in Ireland and flows through 11 counties. So we wanted to start taking into consideration the whole river through curatorial mapping. And we partnered with four local governments in Cavan, Clare, Limerick and Tipperary for the River Residencies, which I am co-curating with my colleague, Cayman Walsh. The River Residencies are an artist residency programme taking place in four rural locations along the length of the River Shannon. In 2021 and 2022, artists Nathan O'Donnell, uh, William Bock, Tanya Candiani and Boredom Research will engage communities along the Shannon, creating participatory arts projects that promote learning about the river. Touching on its history, its ecology, its geology, its industries and its folklore, the River Residencies are a collaboration between Ormson House and four local governments uh, in Limerick, Clare, Tipperary and Cavan. The River Shannon is the most significant river in Ireland and is the longest river in Ireland and the United Kingdom. Running for over 360 kilometres, it is the backbone of the island and it separates the country into east and west. The river has had a significant role in the history of habitation in Ireland since first settlers arrived here 9,000 years ago. The river was the primary means of navigating into the heart of the island People have been dependent on the river for trade, for the transportation of goods, uh, for the sharing of information up until as recently as 70 years ago when commercial trade ceased on the river for good. This has very much ch changed how people think about and interact with the river. And we're at a point now where that long history of the river, that tradition is nearly gone from living memory. That is why this project feels significant to be happening now um, at this moment in time, uh, to try and learn about and preserve and share its history while we still have the potency of living memory to work with. The Cavan Residency is based near the source of the River Shannon, which flows primarily underground, travelling through a network of subterranean streams and caves. Formed over 340 million years ago, the Cavan Burn is a designated UNESCO Global Geopark. The region was once a tropical ocean. You can see fossilised coral embedded in the limestone rock that covers the landscape. We are working with Geopark Guides and Boredom Research, which is a collaboration between British artists Vicky Isley and Paul Smith. Vicky and Paul's work brings together innovative science, creative use of digital technology and storytelling to explore biodiversity, 
critically endangered species and environmental conservation. I mean, it's been quite an experience to um, see the waterway underground as well as overground as well. So we've been spending a lot of time at the source, so Shannon Pot, um, because it is, I mean, it's really phenomenal, isn't it? It looks really mysterious because it's this dark, uh, deep pot. Um, and there's actually not many people that, um, it hasn't been researched that widely. So that I think they think it's about like nine meters deep, but there's still a lot of unsurety about that. Um, and and it was, it's sort of those unknowns that we sort of are interested in. Um, and, and then we had a whole experience of caving, didn't we? But it's that kind of range of different perspectives that not, even, not only have we physically been kind of, you know, along the river, at the source of the river, at the kind of before the source of the river, places where the water kind of enters the ground before it reappears at Shannon Pot, but we've actually been kind of under the ground. So we've been physically in all these different kind of um, um, very different spaces to kind of understand um, the source of the Shannon, but also kind of we've been conceptually in so many different spaces because of the number of different perspectives that we've experienced from ecologists, folklorists, storytellers, um, hydrologists, um, hydrologists. Yeah. Um, and and it's been kind of you know it's been a, an incredible. Um, uh, but so has, kind of it? like a journey yeah. really to kind of like talk to all those people but it's been a lot to absorb as well we were talking about it this morning we were sort of saying Paul had this amazing analogy he sort of said well it's been a bit like we've we've been in a pickle jar um, and now we need to kind of go home and absorb everything we need to absorb all the kind of exotic spices yeah. and everything that's we been need, like thrown at us we need to just be <laughs> so. put on the shelf somewhere and let us sit for a few <laughs> few months to make sense of it all let all that kind of like um, all those kind of flavors mix together and hopefully produce something um, exotic and tasty <laughs> <laughs> The Tipperary Residency is located at Loch Derg, known as the gateway to the heart of Ireland. Loch Derg is the largest of three lakes formed along the River Shannon. The shores of the Loch Derg have been settled since prehistoric times. The region has recorded thousands of archaeological sites and monuments, including castles, medieval ring forts, Neolithic tombs, and places of religious pilgrimage. It was a channel for commercial transport and important for industry development. Recently, industry has given way to mostly leisure activities on the lake. The artist Nathan O'Donnell has been travelling to villages, swimming spots and monastic sites along the shores of the lake, speaking to swimmers and mapping some of the mythologies, place names, customs and daily rituals that have evolved around the water. I'm into the beginning of the second residency at this stage. Um, now we had uh, envisaged the, the residencies as having been, you know, the first was research and the second was production. Um, uh, in some regards, both have it, the both have been kind of happening simultaneously. Um, that, you know, the, the conversations I'm having, including some recorded interviews with with swimmers, um, have been, you know, that has been it, in some ways it's been gathering material, and I have been writing right the way through. With this second residency, we're really trying to to I suppose begin to put shape on the design of the the publication. So I'm working with a designer, Claire Bell, who I've uh, who I've worked with on several projects before, and we've really devised a certain, um, uh, I guess, a methodology for working together um, that that uh, focuses a lot on place. A good part of what we've done has been participatory, and we would be thinking a lot about what it means to um, to use editing and, and publishing as a kind of participatory device. The original kind of forecast for what this this residency would be, we did anticipate that there would be more, something that looks more like what we're familiar with as participation. So possibly workshops, um, uh, town hall style meetings, bringing people together on the lake in a kind of formalized and organized way. Um, and we've had to rethink that obviously um, uh, because of COVID, because of the restrictions, because we can't bring people together necessarily in this way or that way. Uh, funnily enough though, the experience of the first residency really seemed to suggest an alternative way of working anyway. People wanted to kind of touch base on a day and see what, what the weather looked like and maybe we would go on the morning or the afternoon. And there was a kind of fluidity and informality to, um, to the, the, the way in which I was engaging with people. And the way in which people encounter the lake, I think, is really important to think about. So in some regards, a kind of um, formalised, structured approach to participation didn't feel natural or right in this context. 
Um, and so I, I felt like I really, if I was going to respond genuinely to the, to, I guess the character of the lake or the fabric of the, of the kind of relationships people have to the water and to one another, then it actually was going to need to be more um, slower and more informal and more fluid. So following those cues has, has really led in a different direction and it has allowed, uh, I guess it's, by, I, people are probably having to rethink participation in lots of ways at the moment. Um, and perhaps those, those uh, more individual or intimate encounters, we might come to value those uh, uh, in, in ways ju that's just as important as the kind of the, the mass encounter, the kind of collective action. These are all things that I've, I've been thinking about and certainly that's, that's kind of fed into how we're looking at this second residency. I'm continuing to meet with, with people, we're, we'll be meeting with and, and visiting more of the swimming spots and gathering materials, looking at the wildlife, looking at the flora and fauna and all of that as we go, but also just continuing to have those, those kind of ongoing conversations um, and really embedding the project in the, in the place and in the people we're, we're talking to. And it's kind of interesting, it's been interesting to sort of understand, like here we are at the source of the Shannon, but how many other, and, and the Shannon kind of runs all the way through Ireland, r right to um, the, the south. But also there's other connections, like the, the, the Shannon pot cuts through limestone with kind of, with, with, with layers of strata that kind of run all across and connect it up to um, other areas in Europe. And, and a lot of the stone art that we're kind of experiencing here kind of runs, you know, um, along the coast from Scotland through Ireland to Galicia and Portugal. So there's all these other kind of, in, in a way, kind of flows or streams that kind of connect this location. The river residencies were developed in 2019 prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've had to reorganise the timeline and the structure with each of the artists to work within public safety guidelines and to adapt to their needs for research, creative development and production. The public engagement programme was entirely reimagined and a key decision with the partners was to create a new community liaison role to engage somebody who's embedded within the community to provide insights into the local context to assist with developing authentic connections and to contribute to the development of the projects in each county. We have been focusing on outdoor activities, on more intimate gatherings, one-to-one -one meetings, and a documentary film by Shane Serrano from the award-winning Crude Media Company and a commissioned soundtrack by Limerick-based artist Mankey. Next year, we'll be working with William Bach and Tanya Candiani in Clare and Limerick respectively, and we will be presenting new artworks by all four artists and you can find out more by visiting our website at ormsonhouse.com.